In this video, you're going to learn how you can group data when you're using Swift Data Framework. Now, unlike SQL, Swift Data does not include any way to perform a group by operation. So if you have written any SQL, you know the group by statement uh, or the group by basically allows you to, you know, nest it into different sets and then return those things. But you can really do that in Swift data. So how would we accomplish grouping data when we are using Swift data? Well, one of the things is that if your data is already in a nice way, then we can simply display it in a group. Let's take a look at an example. We're not going to take a use the example for the movies right now because you can already see that the movies example contain the name and the genre. And both these properties, especially the genre, is on the movie class itself. So it's not really a hierarchy or nested or some sort of a tree that's being developed. It's more of a flat structure. And that makes it very hard to group the data. Maybe I want to group the data. I want to display the genre, let's say action, action movies. And I want to display all the movies that are action. So I will say Batman over here. And then I will say Spider-Man. And then maybe there's another genre called kids. And I will say over here, I don't know, Finding Nemo and so on. But we can't really do that because the movie over here is flat structure. It's not like genre contains a array of movies. So how can we solve this? In order to solve it, let's go ahead and create a structure which can allow us to visualize that how it will look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a very simple structure over here, which is between the post and the comment. And these are not really saved in the database or anything. This is just so that you can visualize that what's going to happen or what kind of a structure you need. Now, this is a really nice structure because we have a post which has an ID, it has a name, and it also has an array of comments. So it's already one level deep and it has a relationship with the comments, which is one post can have many comments. So this is already a really good looking structure. Let's go ahead and write some code to create some dummy posts. There we go. We created a post. You can see the post can have a name and the post can have an array of comments. So they're like multiple comments over here. We have another post with multiple comments. Okay. So how would we display this in a nice hierarchy if we were using Swift? Well, we we're using Swift UI. You can use an outline group and all that, but I think outline group is mainly for if you have a recursive relationship, which, which we don't have. So what we can end up doing is we can simply use a for each. We will go through all the posts. And I know that you might be wondering, why are we talking about posts? Shouldn't we talking about, shouldn't we talk about the movies? Yeah, you're right. I mean, we should be talking about the movies, but it's always a good idea to see what kind of a structure post contains. And that will help us visualize a new structure that we can build, which will be very similar to the post, but for movies. Okay. So post in, and now I can so go ahead and say post.name. Okay. Well, there we go. It displays the name. That's pretty good. And inside over here, I can also run another for each and I can display the comment. So comment in and then display the comment itself. Comment.subject. There we go, we got the comments. Now you can add a little bit more padding over here to make it look nicer. So let's say 20 padding. And there we go. It looks like a hierarchy, a nested relationship. One post can have two comments. The second post also has two comments. Great, so this is kind of like a hierarchy that we're trying to build. And after this hard coding exercise, we found out that this is a kind of a structure that we are looking for, especially the post part of it. The post can have an ID, name, and comments. 
And this is exactly what we are trying to develop. All right. So how do we do this? Well, one thing we can do is we can create a very similar structure to the post, but for movies. So I'll create a struct. I'll call it genre, but you can call it anything you want. It will be identifiable. It will have an ID so as to conform to identifiable. We will have a name also. And we will also have a list of movies, which will be movies, all right? And now you can see the genre is now very much like post, except it's for movies. But we need to also populate the genre. So let me remove these post part of it because this is just for our sake, right? Just for understanding. We're not really working with posts and comments. We're working with movies. Now inside the content view, all this kind of a grouping can be done inside a property or using these properties. So we're going to create and it's going to return you an array of genres. Let's go ahead and return an empty array for now so that the compiler doesn't bother us. Next, we're going to go ahead and there are multiple ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you two different ways. So let me go ahead and write it over here. This is option number one. Option number one. Okay. So we'll say available genres equals to, and we will get the genres, only the genres from the movies array. So map, and we are going to simply get the genre. So this will give you an array over here, uh, which contains string genres, because you can see the genre is a string. But since we have multiple movies, Actually, I should probably display the movies over here so you have a better idea. So let me go ahead and display movies. Movie in movie dot name. And so we got the name of the movies. And if I go ahead and try to display, let's go ahead and put it in F stack maybe. And I'll display the genre, movie dot genre. Okay. And let's add a spacer in the middle also. Okay, so we got action, we got action, and we have kids. This basically means that if we look at the available genre, if you actually print it out, we're not even using it, but if you do print it out, you will find out that it is going to give you three genres uh, because each movie has its own genre. Action, action, and kids. So we want to make sure that we're not getting duplicates. Action in this case is a duplicate and we don't really want that. So what we can do is we can easily use set. So let me remove this and we will, whatever the result comes from over here, we're gonna put it in the set. Set is automatically going to remove the duplicates and now we will have the available genres. Okay, great. So once we have the available genres, we can loop through it. Available genres, dot map we are going to get a genre and we can return this also so we're going to get the genre we're going to say movies by genre and we'll say movies dot filter not first but we're going to use filter and we'll say genre equals to genre and now we can go ahead and create our instance of the new struct that we built, passing in the genre and passing in the movies by genre. A double equals two should be used. There we go. And we can comment out or even remove this line. So this is our first option. And now we can go through the genres and we can display it. So let me go ahead and do that for each genre. And we will display the, now it's in the same structure that we actually want. Uh, the genre is, I guess, already genre. Let's see, actually. Uh, genre dot name. What am I missing over here? Oh, genres. And we will say genre in genre dot name. So let's see if it displays our genres. That's good because there are actually only two genres. So it is showing us two genres, but now we need to display the movies 
related to the genre. So we can say genre dot movies, just like post and comments. We'll get the movie and we'll say movie dot name. And you know what? That's pretty much it. There we go. It actually displays nicely. Uh, if you want to add a padding, that would be good. Let's go ahead and add some padding leading 20. And now it's uh, looking more nested. All right. So this is how you will display a group by or nested data, uh, which is coming from Swift data. But the Swift data, which is coming from Swift data, is actually flat. It's not really group by, but we have to write this genres on our own to perform this. All right. Now this is one way of doing it. Uh, let me show you another way, which is option number two. Now option number two is using dictionaries. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a genre dictionary equals to, which will have string. And for the second item, it will have movies or movie or movie array. Now we can go ahead and go through the movie. So movie in movies and genre dictionary. So the key will be the genre itself. Default value, we can put like an empty if it doesn't have, and then we can also append it. So the good thing over here is that for that particular key, it's just going to append the movie right there. Okay. And I think I'm missing something over here. Let's see over here what's going on. Uh, we have this movie default. And let's see what's going on over here. Oh, var. I was missing the var part. That's good. And now in the end, we will end up creating our genre again. So return, we can say genre dictionary dot map. All right. And in this map, we can easily access the tuple. So it will be genre name and movies. And then simply return it using the genre. So it will be genre name and the movies. So this is another way of doing things. Um, I'm going to comment out the first way so that it doesn't bother us. So you can use either or because if you see when it's refreshing on the right hand side, the result is exactly the same. So it's not like it's something different. So this is how this is one of the ways or two ways of uh, grouping the data. And um, hopefully at WWDC 2024, they may act, announce something for Swift data that will allow you to perform aggregate operations. And maybe this query will become like, oh, I can go ahead and pass a max or I can do a group by over here. So it is possible that they can provide these things. But for now, uh, it's not available and you can use these techniques to group the data once you have retrieved the data from the database. So hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much. If you have liked this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my website, azamsharp.school. And on this website, you can find a lot of different courses, including courses on Swift data. Right over here, you can see the course on Swift data. I have courses on full stack development. If you want to learn about iOS development with Vapor, and that's the only course available in the market. It's a really good course. And I recently launched a brand new course on Core Data Bootcamp. You can also check it out, reactive programming. Uh, you have Mac OS development, server-driven, test-driven development, Swift data, create ML, reality fundamentals, reality kit, I mean, augmented reality. I mean, it's, it's a lot of courses, right? And I, and I keep working on some new courses. Uh, and you can access all of those courses by a monthly subscription or an annual subscription. With annual subscription, you do end up saving a little bit more, $50. Or if you're interested, you can just buy an individual course. So if I, if you're interested in, actually, let me go to the Swift data course because this video is about Swift data. So you can definitely check out, you can subscribe and get the course or you can buy the course. And it's a pretty long course. I mean, I keep on adding new content to the course, but you can definitely check it out. It's a lot of stuff including syncing data with iCloud, integrating, storing binary migration, 
I mean, a lot of stuff is going on in this course. So this is the most complete course available. I think it's like nine, maybe plus hours. So, and I keep on adding some new stuff. So definitely check out azamsharp.school and thank you so much for watching.